Yeah, I do. Yeah, I done six years. Even today, I do civil policy as well. If they come along, uh, okay. Then the past four years, I'm active on Salesforce. And right. It's it's into my training experience. Mhm. Mm I've got uh, nearly five years now. I think I could. Four point five years of training experience online. I, mean, I do online trainings. I do in class. I used to be in class, but lack of time now. And I do now and then some corporate trainings as well. Uh, so you you've been teaching Salesforce for the past four years. I've been teaching Salesforce for past uh, one and a half to two years now. Okay. I've been teaching civil okay. uh, before that. I was actually. Oh, okay. a, uh, one of the corporate trainers for Oracle, Wipro, uh, Frankel, Templeton, things like that. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Got that it. was people, and then uh, I came into Salesforce. That's okay. about uh, part about me. And your name is Tom. What I'm interested to know is your current background and your uh, technical skills and your uh, expectations. Out of the course, are you learning? What's your current background? So currently, I mean, with my experience, I have like eight years experience. But the problem is, I am into mainframes. Okay. Uh, and main and uh, it's been quite a long time, and due to many reasons, I never I could never switch. And I thought now it's pretty high time I should switch. Okay. And, yeah, that's uh, yeah. So technically speaking, it's mainframe, co work, co uh, natural area with those kind of stuffs that I'm working on. Um, I know. Any I mean, I know basic. Uh, I know basic SQL stuff and you know COBOL that kind of stuff. But then, okay. yeah, I don't. Do I'm not. Yeah, that's the problem. So I. That's what my question was. I mean, I'm not. Maybe I did one month of training or something back. Maybe ten years back or something in Java and all, but uh, yeah, I never worked on it. I don't have any hands on. And yeah, ten years back, uh, uh, you know, picture is totally yeah, changed now. <laughs> today, you don't even know exactly. Java yeah. be a programmer. Uh, you know, earlier Google was not Correct. that famous. Today Google is there, so you can get any information. Right. Thing, right? Saving <laughs> life, career, self, right. right? So that's a different story. Yeah, <laughs> things are not really that hard as they were in the past. So, mm -hmm. uh, in many ways, things are easier today. And right. uh, what is your expectation? Why, as you said, you, know, you want to switch uh, technology, so, right? So, yeah. So basically, that was my from uh, prime objective. So I just wanted to get out of uh, main uh, mainframe, and then second, I didn't want to get into something which is also kind of old or so I tried info, I thought of Informatica, but then there are a lot of people into Informatica. So I, after some research and stuff, I came to know this was something for which I don't need a lot of prerequisites. Maybe I do need a little bit of hoops, concepts, but still there is a good market out there. And so I thought maybe, you know, something that I can look yes, out information for. information is right. Your information was right. Uh, pretty much compared to other technologies, uh, Salesforce is... Not well, even half as yeah. tough as it. Okay. Hello, Tom. Can you hear me? Hello. Right. Tom, yeah. can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yeah, I yes. can. See, uh, Salesforce is not, uh, no, as uh, even half as tough as other technologies, uh, but you would reap uh, equal benefits or even more. Right. The Salesforce is pretty new now in the market. Okay. So, uh, so having got that information, yeah, you're asking something. No, I was saying having said that, how do, well, based on my background, my mainframe and non oops uh, knowledge, how yeah. how difficult you think it would be for me to, you know? Uh, I would scale on a on a on a scale of ten. Uh, let me give you numbers. 
uh, I think uh, five or six is the difficulty you would face. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's average difficulty. Like informatica, you have to put a lot of effort, like eight to nine. Well, I mean, in, in informatica, I thought I just need to know SQL, which was which was okay. I mean, and oh, yeah. um, but then you need to write procedures. So it doesn't end there. Okay. You need to schedule jobs. You need to write batch processes, and you need to uh, wait long hours. A lot of things. You know, database is all uh, you know, game of waiting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is it's a tension job. You know, I've seen people uh, working late nights, weekends. Uh, when there are data applications, yes. that, that's true. Yeah. yeah, that's not one wants to you know. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, comparatively, your Salesforce is pretty cool job. You are okay. And you don't need software. And, and what about the projects? I mean, I thought Salesforce is not very long-term project. It would be like short-term projects, right? Every. Uh, we will, we will, yeah, we will give you more information. Sure. Okay. Uh, let's get on with the demo. With sure, 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 sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Then we'll have this discussion again about you know, okay. uh, the course. Uh, let me uh, ask three more questions to you, and uh, that gives me a uh, clear ground where to start with. So okay. let's uh, let me ask you what do you think about cloud, and uh, what do you think about CRM. Uh, and what do you think about uh, Salesforce? In your words. Okay. Um, cloud, I thought, is something which uh, for which you don't need every everything is a virtual memory. I mean, the, the server is virtual. I mean, we, nothing is on your system physically, so okay. everything mm -hmm. is stored somewhere. Maybe if, if we say take Salesforce at such, such Salesforce location, so the server is uh, located virtually. Even the memory, the storage. Uh, software, hardware, everything is Correct. is remote. Correct. Yeah. So, what do you think CRM is? CRM is the client relationship uh, management, or something. Yeah. So, from what I understand, CRM is basically uh, something for which is used for to understand the client's uh, requirements and how we can manage those requirements and how we can, you know. So something like Google. I mean, if you do a search today, uh, Google will take that search and then start giving you advertisements every day. You know, something like so. Based on our feedback, based on our uh, response. In okay. So, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, no, so that's fine. You know, I just want to know your idea on it. So, what do you think Salesforce is? Yeah. So Salesforce, I thought, is one of one of those CRMs. I mean, one of those uh, uh, customer relationship tool, which is on cloud and okay. yeah that's good that's good yeah which will assist you to uh, achieve that right what you wanted in CR yeah mm -hmm. okay so uh, that says some things so let's start with something you know this demo mainly focuses on uh, giving you a clear picture about what is cloud and what is CRM and what is Salesforce and what uh, you are going to learn and how your career is going to be and what is the agenda and that's the topic. Okay? okay. So let's start with what is cloud. As you rightly said, it's remote hosting. It is one way of uh, interacting with computers. We would call it as. It's called computing. Mm -hmm. So uh, generally the word uh, in com comes with conjunction computing, uh, cloud computing. Okay, so computing means what? Interacting or using computers. So there are other ways you interact with computers as well. You might have experienced them already. Like autonomous, autonomous computing, a standalone mm -hmm. computer like your desktop at home. You install a game in it, you have to come back to your desktop and play. Standalone. You got a client server model. This is quite famous, right? Everywhere yeah. uh, are uh, how in the past decades, biggest implementations were done on this model. There are servers everywhere, and you know, client machines with certain configuration are connected to the servers. Lighter version of the software is installed on the clients, and they connect to the server. Mm -hmm. Now you got mainframes. This is one way of computing. 
huge computing power. And uh, you got grid computing, you know, where you bring computers in network when hardware was quite expensive. This was a game used uh, you know, to build Unix and Linux uh, OSs. And you got uh, uh, utility computing in pay as you go and use it. So that's also one way you interact with computers. You got peer-to-peer -peer networks. You, all your torrents you download coming from peer-to-peer -peer right. computing. This is also one way you interact with computers. So this is all the fun, uh, all those different ways you interact with computers. All the ways you join to one road, uh, you have to interact with computer. And these are all one different ways you do that. Along with all these uh, technologies we were using, models of interactive computers, there was always a need and that was there from the very beginning. You know, that, that, you know, looking into other desktop or controlling a computer remotely, that need was there from the very beginning because uh, hardware cannot be always replicated, it would be really expensive. So you want to control your system from a remote source. For that, your computer and the computer that you want to control should be on the same network. So we we can have like LAN or uh, LAN network, you know, local area network uh, connected to all the computers. We use uh, some software like the remote desktop or desktop sharing technologies. So these are some technologies that we use to control or look into the other computer and control it. For that to happen, you should have computers connected together in a LAN network, right? And mm -hmm. it is like in a building you have got uh, some com 100 computers and you connect them to a LAN network, that's good. But in a campus if you have several buildings and uh, each one has its own LAN, then you connect between LANs, that is called as WLAN. Mm -hmm. You can still control a computer which is in the wide LAN network. Uh, if it is still there in the network, but you will be given privileges to do so, right? In yeah. late uh, 90s or early 2000, you know, there was a boom, uh, internet, where uh, HTTP protocol was widely accepted as a common protocol and everybody understands the HTTP transmission. Mm. So then the network, whichever uh, comes under HTTP, is joined together and that was called as worldwide network. Mm -hmm. right? Whichever computer is there in that network, you can access that computer. And the good example is what is happening right now. You can see my screen. I've got a different IP in the www network and you got a different IP and you could see my screen. Right? Yeah. So, uh, that is possible only because we are all in one network. And you can also control my machine. If I give you access to keyboard and mouse control, you could access any of the files. You can insert new files, you can delete files, you can update files, do whatever you wanted. Okay. So that is the advantage of being in a common network. So when the technology called desktop sharing or remote desktop, uh, these technologies, uh, you have uh, one uh, limitation. What is that? You cannot control the incoming requests. Like you, if, you, if I give you keyboard and mouse control, you can do anything. I cannot control what and tell you, you only do this, you only do that. For that reason, what I would do is at my IP, at my computer, I will install a web server. Okay. And uh, in that web server, I'll keep some files so that you only access those files. And if at all you wanted anything from my machine, from those files you pass the request. And that request will come in and I'm going to use some you know, uh, server level coding like PHP or ASP or JSP, anything. And then translate that to uh, what is your request and then uh, query accordingly and give back the results through the same web server. So having web okay. server installed at an IP, you can control the request and you can control the response as well. Right. So that is what Google is also doing. 
So in our very same network www, there is an IP uh, where Google is also hosting its system. Right? But they have a big web server which can take you know millions of requests or maybe billions. Facebook is also there in one, as one of the IP. But you cannot directly get into their computer and see because they have a control network that is through their web servers. Through their web server they'll uh, they'll you know they have a logic of interacting with the database and fetching you the right email of what you're seeing and pictures of what you stored, anything. So, uh, Sridhar, uh, when you say for, uh, web server, is that equivalent to a firewall that you are trying to? Uh, firewall is uh, more with respect to uh, your own system and uh, okay. internet. Uh, it's like security system, basically, Correct. which is as a medium to filter uh, the URLs. Mm -hmm. Okay, what? firewall is part of the web server. Through web server, uh, you know, you can uh, limit the URLs those are coming in, requests and all. You can you keep a fire, uh, firewall at web server and control the request. Okay. All in all, we combine that together and say a web server where it includes the security, it includes the limitations, it includes everything. It's acting as a medium okay. between you and the, the, the actual server. system in the background. Okay. Okay, so over a period as the technology is changing like this, uh, uh, the terminology also changed from desktop sharing to uh, remote desktop, to, you know, today we call it as cloud. Okay. We call it as cloud because of two reasons. One is you are on the world wide web, it is there, everywhere it is there, it is flexible. And second thing is you have got a controlled uh, you know, operation present there. So, uh, when did you first start using or experiencing uh, cloud services? Um, I don't know. I mean, anything on the web, I thought is would be considered cloud, right? I mean, exactly. if I even start exactly anything on the World Wide Web, right? So, if somebody is hosting some uh, their company information like home page, services, contact us page. They're, right. they're posting those pages online. So you are hitting their web server and their web server is returning you and they will always be there. They're, they're remote, they're on cloud basically. Mm -hmm. Got it. Pretty much it. So that means the email services you use. So today you got uh, social networking, email services, e-commerce, you got you know uh, internet banking. Give me one second here. Son. Yeah, okay. uh, internet banking. So you can think about these now. <laughs> Uh, earlier, you, they were just limited to client server models, but today uh, you can have a controlled operation uh, to access the bank servers, bank machines uh, through uh, individual login. Right? Yep. So, you can book your tickets online. What not? You can do anything that you were doing in client server model. So why not CRM? Yes, idea is good. So to learn about why not CRM on cloud, you should learn what is CRM. As the definition means, it's, it's abbreviated for customer relationship 
manage. So nothing but managing the relationship with customer. That's what CR means. Managing the relationships with customers. So when I use the word managing, what does that mean? Why do we need to manage in the first place? I mean, are the are they completely uh, unmanageable at the moment? Yes. And what are we managing? Relationships we are managing. So why do we need first of all a relationship with customer? So do we need a relationship? Yes. In today's competitive world, if we don't care your customer, somebody else will definitely care. Why? Right. And and if you're talking about relationship with the customer, first of all, why do we need a customer? Right? Uh, it, of course, it sounds silly, but without customer, there is no growth of the company. Revenue should, is generated from customers, so you should have customers. So once you have customers, then in today's competitive world, uh, things have changed from past decades, uh, multiple folds. Today, there is uh, nothing called monopoly. Earlier. There was only Windows. There was only iPhone. There was only something else, you know, some car, some uh, electronic item. When they were first introduced, uh, they were very unique. But today, you've got a lot of options. You've got competitors, very good. So you have to uh, uh, really pay good attention to the customer because customer is the one uh, who has got a lot of choices. So one thing is that you should provide good quality product to impress the customer. Second thing is that we should give quick response. Whether you solve the problem or not, that's a different point. But quick response is important. So all the business, I mean CRM is not a software. CRM is a subject. CRM is a subject that you know these business MBA people would learn how to manage the relationship with customers. So that's a big subject now. Because everybody is trying to, you know, uh, Customer centric businesses are right? you know, always focusing on how to uh, attract the customer and you know, keep them with you for a long time. So that how you, uh, why you want to build relationship with customers. So if you are building relationship with customers, with how many customers will you build the relationship? You have got like millions of customers, for example, across the world, multinational companies. Then how would you maintain that records you now? You, because if you have only two persons of your friends to remember their contact details, you don't need a contact manager in your phone. But if you got you know, hundreds of friends, you know everybody you know have got multiple phone numbers, home phone, business phone, cell phone, and then everybody has got email addresses, their own addresses, their uh, Facebook account, social networking, a lot of details for each contact. So it is not very easy to remember all the stuff. So you need a contact manager. Similarly relationship with the customer he grows in terms of volume and complexity as well on a regular basis. So in order to handle that you need some something sophisticated of course software to handle it. Like big companies uh, eBay and Amazon, these guys, you know, have resources enough. Uh, you know, they can create their own software. They have a team of uh, IT developers. They can create their own softwares. Okay, but what about other companies which really don't want to venture into IT thing because that's not their primary business. They want to readily purchase. See, a Samsung guy need not uh, buy a phone outside. They build their own phones, but. Uh, common persons or you know uh, corporates, they just want to buy phones. They don't want to build phones. Similarly, you have to purchase something out in the market which is available. And a lo lot of software is out in the market which promise they are, they are the best CRM products. They can help uh, you achieve your goals pretty easily, quicker, faster. Yes, out of all of them, there are, there are few to mention. Good, they like Salesforce, Oracle On Demand. You got Stable, you got PeopleSoft, you got Pega, you got JD Edwards, you got Clarify, you got Sugar CRM, you got MS Dynamics, 
you got uh, SAP CRM. All of these are several CRMs out in the market. To name, we mentioned a few, but there are many others as well. Uh, but out of which there is a thick line between these and these two. Between the these two and these two. These two are cloud-based. These two are cloud-based. Just want to have a border there. So these two are cloud-based CRMs, the other ones are client-server models. So when we discussed about different uh, type of computing models, we have to also discuss the advantage of cloud over other computing models. What is the foremost advantage? Advantage is it's independent of hardware and software also. You don't need a particular computer, a particular laptop, you can just use your mobile phone also to access your emails today, right? So it's completely independent. You don't need a particular software as well, you just need a browser and internet. That's all matters. And second big advantage is low cost. Low cost for whom? For the implementer, whoever wants to implement. So basically, uh, if we are implementing a worldwide uh, setup for a stable uh, CRM in a client server model base, then you can imagine about the hardware setup that you should incur. Hello. Tom, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Tom? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. So saying low cost for the vendor, basically. You know, if I have to set up a client server model, then I have to invest in servers at lo several locations, and I have to install the client machines of certain configuration, certain RAM, and all. Okay. And uh, all the softwares need to be invested on that operating system and all that. And then again. Uh, uh, I mean, real estate costs, electricity bills, and all of these is what I incur. You know? Whereas if it, you, if it is a cloud server, you can place it at anywhere that you are comfortable in any country where store clouds are good, environment friendly, things like that. And you can easily maintain. So that, those are the advantages of cloud. Uh, the second advantage. Third advantage is multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy is like uh, the technical advantage where uh, in a client server model typically you find a client authenticating with server uh, by providing username and password and server uh, after authentication will dedicate resources for the client for that particular client and that session will be there existing for uh, uh, until it is logged off so that is actually a dedicated uh, resources for individuals whereas multi tenancy architecture is like you know it shares the resources across the users, like Google, Gmail and all, you know, they the share resources across so that there is less burden. At the same time, you can increase the performance and also the security, like, you know, like everybody of your tenants uh, remain in the same building in different flats, you can provide common security, better performance and all, rather than having them in different locations. That's multi-tenancy as a technical advantage and maintenance is, is what really uh, wins anybody's heart here. Uh, because in a client server model, if you even think of applying a patch, you can imagine, you know, the amount of effort goes beyond. Behind it, you have to intimate everybody the downtime of the server, and then uh, at that time, you should, uh, you know, train the resources to do it, and then you have to duplicate that on all servers, and all clients also to be updated with the patch. And it's a big process in itself. Whereas tomorrow, you log into uh, Yahoo, you find everything new look, you didn't even know what happened. That is cloud. So installation at one part is pretty easy, easy to maintain. So these are all the advantages of cloud, uh, and which amuses a newcomer in the market who wants to really focus on, you know, we want we want to be innovative 
in their own business. They don't want to take uh, hassles of software, hardware, installation, setup, training, resources. Okay, all of this is uh, not their job. They prefer going for some solution like this, which is ready-made, available online. They could purchase and then use it. Purchase the license and readily use it. So that's what the advantage of cloud over other computing models. So that's where uh, you know you want to pick cloud-based CRMs compared to client server based CRMs. When you're talking about cloud-based CRMs, Salesforce and Oracle on demand, so which one is best out of those? For which uh, we will talk some about the architecture like uh, user at one end using the application and then they, they focus on uh, you know, they, uh, that is built on a platform which is hosted on some infrastructure and then uh, you have something called uh, server at the other end. Somebody is providing application as a service, you know what it is called as? Software as a service. SaaS we call it. Like Google uh, emails, Google apps, Google videos or anything, uh, YouTube and all. Somebody is providing some software to you, like internet banking they are providing a software to you to operate your account online. That's called software as a service. So anybody is hosting uh, their application online, so that is SaaS. And platform as a service, that is a bit rare means somebody is providing uh, a platform for which you uh, on which you can hello Tom can't you hear me Tom can you hear me Tom, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. I I see uh, my voice. No, well, I am speaking, you know, my voice bar moving. Okay, do you see uh, the message like uh, talking uh, in the audio section? When I speak, hello, Tom, can you hear me? Hello, Tom, can you hear me? Can you see my messages? Hey, hello, hey, hey Tom, hey, what happened? Call and do using the phone. I don't know what happened. I couldn't hear you at all. Uh, oh, is it? Starting yeah, because I. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I see the message talking. Shridhar is coming, but when you are speaking, you no, know, nothing like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know it just listen my it just disconnect my audio for some reason, and then it's not connecting at all. So. Okay, so is Sorry, phone yeah. fine fine with you? No problem. Yeah, phone is fine. Phone is good. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, okay, fine. So I was just saying, you know, having software deployed online for you to use is called as software as a service. Whereas platform itself means if you provide a platform like Google Sites, okay, where you can build uh, a website uh, using Google Sites, that's a platform. And you have Windows Azure where you can code everything in, in Visual Studio and everything online. So that's Windows Azure. So that's the platform. So providing platform itself as a service is, is rare, but you can provide this task and infrastructure as a service. Everybody provides infrastructure, you know, today uh, a Google account provides nearly 10 GB of space for each and every individual Gmail. So, that's good. So, what does Oracle On Demand got? What does 
salesforce.com yes. SFDC has got. So uh, yes, both of them has got application. Otherwise, they are not cloud at all. They've got it. Platform no for Oracle on demand. Yes for Salesforce. Yes, infrastructure. Both of them provide infrastructure. Yes. So that's the biggest difference between Oracle on demand and Salesforce.com. So that's that's you know uh, you you have to request Oracle guys to configure application for you, whereas you can do it yourself when you're using Salesforce. So that's basically uh, Salesforce uh, you know taking major market share because you can easily configure Salesforce. Now, having said that, we can now make a comment about say Salesforce is a CRM tool based on cloud mode, right? So do you agree? Salesforce is a Salesforce is just one CRM tool like any many other CRM tools. There are many, and CRM is one such domain, just like many domains like e-commerce, social networking, lot of things. Uh, and cloud model is one such model like many other models like grid computing, client server models, and all. So if you are looking for Salesforce, that means you are you are completely uh, you know narrowing down like you know what you want to get into. So from main friends, if you are shifting to uh, Salesforce, you are not shifting to Salesforce, but you are in turn shifting to a domain called CRM. So tomorrow Salesforce be there or not, that's a different thing. But CRM will always exist. CRM is always fresh also. Okay. Now in your statement that you are switching from mainframe to CRM, how bad does that sound? No, that's what I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. See, mainframes is something that is not a hot topic today, right? That was there already. Sure. Back. Now, yeah. CRM is hot and CRM will be hot forever because okay. CRM needs needs as such. I mean, it always has to be fresh. You have to contact the customer and customer reactions. You will start, uh, you know, uh, going to next level, next level, next level to impress the client to any level. And that never ends. So, CRM is always fresh. CRM is always there. So, new new products come which with uh, different because till yesterday there was Siebel uh, taking the major market share. Now Salesforce is giving good competition in the mid level and small company levels. Uh, so, tomorrow something else might come up with special features, good features. So, this is always there. But in the CRM domain, you will never. Uh, uh, you know, hit a uh, end point. So you will always see something new, and you should be ready to learn something new. But is you know, software again, right? So Salesforce is one such software in CRMs, uh, which is uh, currently the cutting using the cutting edge technologies like web services and Google Apps integration, social network integration, CTI integration, readily available. So that's really a very perfect CRM. Uh, for a moderate business, you know, who wants to really quick start on uh, uh, marketing or sales or service, but don't have any setup on IT right now, but would like to compete with the major or bigger players in the market. So definitely, Salesforce is a go, and they really like Salesforce. So in this Salesforce, like, what do we have to learn? Like, Salesforce has got uh, two components main, mostly, that is administration. And development. Administration uh, in Salesforce and development is again two parts. Like it has got Visual Force and it has got FX. So administration is configuring the system. Like you know, you set up the organizations, uh, and you set up the naming conventions according to your company. So, what and all necessary for your company 
uh, you're going to configure that uh, word given by Salesforce. So that is admin. It's only point and click technology. So nothing much there. All are wizards. So you just go through each of them and learn how to do it. That's all. So that might not be sufficient every time. So development is something that might pitch in uh, at one point or other. So where you will be supposed to uh, learn how to uh, present new features in Salesforce. So when you have to add new features, you might want to add new pages uh, to to show your data in a different way. And you want you might want to add new logic also. So Visual Force is is to create new pages. Whereas Apex is to create new logic for extending Salesforce. Extending Salesforce, you can do it, uh, you know, by Java lookalike language called Apex, where it oops based on you know, any uh, Java is core Java is enough actually to start with. So while creating pages, the uh, basic understanding about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Ajax could be ne necessary. Uh, I said understanding. You don't have to be experts on that. So you just understanding is more than enough. And you can get that understanding pretty easily in a couple of hours when you go to w3schools.com if you're not sure about it. So this is a website called w3schools where you can go through and learn a lot of stuff there. I mean, it's just a, a two-hour job, you know, to get a hang of what HTML is. It's pretty, one of the very simple languages of uh, browser. Okay. The whole course would take around 30 days for us to complete. 30 hours, basically. So, typically three to four weeks. Okay. Monday to Saturday, including both Monday and Saturday, IST. Okay. And, uh, yeah, you, in the process, you will be given two applications, real-time apps, for you to practice and build them. So, practicing them will make you equivalent to, you know, a year and a half, two year old uh, experienced guy in first domain. Uh, when you said uh, two real time, I mean it's kind of projects or I mean what yeah, what kind of projects, yeah. we call apps here, uh, like applications okay. basically. So creating them is like working on two different projects all together. One will be simpler, okay. one will be moderately complex, so you get a kind of hang of it, what's going on. Okay. And it, it's only thirty hours because I thought I was, when I spoke to the Coordinate reset it's 40 hours. Which one? No, uh, is it only 30 hours, the whole course? The entire so course is just 30 hours. Yeah. Because when I spoke to the coordinate reset, it was 40 hours. That's why. Uh, no, he okay. gets confused because, you know, regularly he, they are just coordinators for almost like uh, any uh, uh, package, OBIE and okay. you know, SAP and all that they do. So generally they are like uh, bigger packages where they need installations and all that takes time. But here you don't That's need right. the cloud-based software, so installations and all are not there. So pretty much mm -hmm. uh, in 30 hours we can get the concept. Yeah. Uh, and the timings, uh, what what kind of timings would be? Yeah, what are the best timings? Of, where are you located? Tell me that. Uh, I'm in New Jersey, so Eastern time. It's Eastern, Eastern time. Eastern oh, time. it is too late now. It's now like uh, midnight? Yeah, 30? 30. 30, yeah, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, New, New York time zone. So uh, I need to, f because recently I'm going to start one more uh, session. How about uh, when the time is... Uh, 5 a.m. for me. So that's like uh, 7.30 for you. How is it for you? 7.30 p.m.? Uh, it, it, it's too soon for you. I mean, 7.30 is too soon. I don't have, I don't have to be 7.30. I mean, it, is 7.30 p.m. soon for you? Can you not attend? Yeah, actually, I mean, I might, I might be coming late from work sometimes, you know, so. Okay, so what time is, I mean, uh, convenient for you? I was thinking anything after 9 is good, but I know comfortable. After 9 your time, right? Yeah, Eastern. Let me see. That is 
your nine uh, is That's like uh, six six thirty. Your nine p.m. is like six thirty for me, right? So six thirty yeah. and seven o'clock is also fine uh, because uh, seven o'clock slot is getting free soon. Okay. So okay. uh, that mm -hmm. might in another four five days, you know, that the other slot oh, gets yeah, that's perfect. Right? I mean, yeah. yeah. So that's like uh, nine thirty time, nine thirty p.m. for you. Right. Okay. So that that might be uh, free, but till then we're gonna have to adjust a little bit. How about morning hours? Your time? No, the, that's why I mean, uh, is your is your course starting anytime? Uh, I mean, you want to start sooner. Is, is yeah, we'll start, start if I can. sooner because because there is another uh, you know one or two students you know who uh, might be interested. So I just want to start everybody. Uh, I don't want to uh, take a backup session and things like that. So, uh, so you're planning starting Monday or something like that? Uh, yeah, that's that's the idea. I plan to start on Monday. Uh, so uh, in, you you can take take your time you know it's not that hurry and all so uh, what I wanted yeah. to you know uh, the others might not wait so I say exactly like that. I, mean, I agree but yeah. what I was thinking if you have a seven seven o'clock but when do you want to start I mean are are you are you planning to start uh, when do you want to start I was thinking next week but then if you Monday is okay you don't have you mean the tenth yeah tenth. Yeah, your tenth is like eleventh mm -hmm. morning for me. Okay. No, but I don't. I don't want to stop you. I mean, if you, if you have other people also, I was thinking around seventeenth kind of thing. And since you oh, said you want to start on seventeenth. Okay. Yeah. So seventeenth, uh, yeah, there might be one more batch starting on seventeenth as well. Not an issue. Uh, yeah. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. So we're gonna, you know, seventeenth yeah. uh, when uh, it's, it's always a moving table. So. Uh, let's see what what's the situation at that time. Okay, so okay. just be in touch with uh, Karthik, you know, who is in touch with you, or you know, any any uh, yeah. someone from Max Online. So be in touch with them okay. and uh, let them know uh, when yeah. you want to start at that time. We can fix it move and go. Okay. Okay. So if you have a few other questions, if you have some couple of minutes. yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So I was saying um, I'm from a finance domain. So how often do you that does people use uh, Facebook in a finance, like a trading or a banking, uh, banking you know area? Do you know? Okay. So finance, uh, you are in the finance domain. So you wanted all that logic to be, uh, uh, you know, how is that placed in Salesforce? Is what you're talking about? Yeah. The, the reason is, you know, when I'm building a resume, so I'm in a finance domain. I mean, it would be really difficult for me to, even when I'm taking it, I at least need to tell them I'm, I'm in, you know, I'm in a Morgan Stanley, and still I was doing sales So but I don't know how. Again, you know, maybe sales is what Morgan Stanley also will have, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can uh, start focusing or uh, put your resume more oriented towards sales in Morgan Stanley. I've got a project, you know, on Morgan Stanley. What they've done, there, there is a Salesforce project in it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they um, they do it for Salesforce. Right. Yeah, I I I don't know people who are working on Salesforce in Morgan, but yeah, I was just thinking how yeah. how you know how common it is in financing firms that you use for okay. Salesforce. Uh, and uh, do you guys also help with the you know resume preparation or anything of the job? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's part of the job. So at the end, I'll give, tell you how to face the interviews, how to you know, okay. prepare your resume. I'll give you some sample resumes as well for you to start. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. I think I. Yeah. And uh, how much is the theory? I mean, it's more, more looks like mostly it's practical. You know, is that mostly practical? Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. It's like you know, uh, we we talk a little bit about the CRM concepts, the basic CRM concepts, and then we'll get mm -hmm. in how do we implement them in Salesforce directly. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. I mean, really good. Okay. Good talking to you. Right, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for your time too. It's too late. So uh, just let. Yeah.